Grace and mercy and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Sometimes choices that should be easy and clear to us aren't always, are they? Our, our vision can get so muddled by so many other things and, and uh, what should be an easy decision, an easy choice for us to make and easily become very complicated. And that's when outside help is, is helpful to us, isn't it? When you can get someone in, someone you trust who can come to you and say, all right, let's sit down, let's, let's figure this out together. Right, and maybe you make a list of the pros and the cons of the choices that you have in front of you, and they help you see this outsider's perspective that you didn't have because you were right in the middle of it. And that person that you trust can help you to see, oh, well, the choice is very clear here. God's people needed that. The choice should have been so clear to them, but, but it had gotten muddled. So very muddled for them. God's people in the southern kingdom of Judah saw their brothers and sisters in the northern kingdom of Israel get taken off into captivity. They were defeated by the Assyrians. They saw it happen with their own eyes. And they knew why it happened. It's because they had disobeyed God. Because they had turned from him. They have been worshipping false gods. And they did not repent. The choice on who to follow should have been clear. For those chosen people of God in that southern kingdom of Judah. But things have become so muddled. There were these other false gods to follow. They, they hadn't learned from their parents. So much was making a clear decision very unclear for them. Uh, but God didn't give up on them. He, he sent his prophets. And the prophet Jeremiah was one of those who came to that southern kingdom of Judah with that message of repent. Because if you don't, you're going to end up just like your brothers and sisters in the north. An enemy is going to come in and defeat you and carry you off and destroy the city of Jerusalem and the temple and your homes and everything if you do not repent. The choice should have been clear for them, but it, they needed some outside perspective. My friends, you know, as, as we are here, Nearly 2,600 years after these words were spoken and recorded, is for as smart as we think we are, as intelligent as we think we are, as as wonderful a Christians as we think we are, often, sometimes the choice can become muddled for us too, can't it? And shame on us. Because we have everything we need right at our fingertips. We, we have the whole counsel of God's word. Every word that he spoke through the prophets and the apostles and all those other men that he inspired to write these words. We have it all completed right here in our hands. For us to read and to hear and to believe and to know and to live. And, and what do we do? And we don't choose wrong. And so God comes to us again. In his word. God comes to us. And, and clearly lays out. Two choices for us. The spirit inspires. The prophet Jeremiah here. To lay out two choices. Of where you can put your trust. Where you're going to find your purpose. And your meaning. And your peace and your, the purpose of your life in this world. And, and where you're going to put your hope. And the choice should be clear, shouldn't it? You know, the, maybe you've heard this before. It's been attributed to Albert Einstein, but that's not really the case. That the definition of, of insanity is to keep on doing the same thing over and over and over, expecting different results. Friends, it's time to stop the insanity. 
It's time to stop making that wrong choice of where we're going to put our trust and our hope and, our, and try to find our peace and our purpose, thinking we're going to find a, a different result when we always don't, and to choose a different way, to choose a better way. To choose the way that God lays out for us and tells us, this is where you find what you need and what you long for. What your heart desires. The Spirit leads the prophet Jeremiah to use this picture of vegetation. So we can understand it. We can picture it here. And here we have this idea that you have a bush, a wasteland, it can be like that. Or, or you can be like a tree planted by water. A bush or a tree doesn't get the choice where to plant themselves, do they? Where that seed falls, that's where that bush or that tree is going to grow. They don't, it doesn't get the choice, but, but dear Christian, you do. You can choose where to plant yourself. So let's listen to God's word this morning. Let's compare these two places to plant ourselves side by side and see that the choice is very clear for us. Listen again to our first lesson that we read from, from Jeremiah 17. It says, this is what the Lord says. These are the words of the Lord to you today. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord, that person will be like a bush in the wastelands. They will not see prosperity when it comes. They will dwell in the parched places of the desert, in a salt land where no one lives. There's the one choice. But here comes the second choice. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought, and it never fails to bear fruit. Dear Christian, God's word comes to you today. These words recorded 2,600 years ago or so that still speak to you today, these living and active words of God inspired by that Holy Spirit to lay these choices before you and to make you look deep, see, where have I been planting myself? Where have I chosen to plant myself? Have you become so wrapped up in the things of this world? It's been easy in the last couple of years, hasn't it? To begin to become consumed by the affairs of this world, the politics and all of these other things going on in our world. Is that what you're tapping into? And how is that leaving you feeling? Maybe you've been planting yourself and trying to find your, your strength and your peace and your satisfaction from your job. And those achievements and accomplishments that you are seeking after, how's that going for you? Striving for more, better, different? Where are you planting yourself? Where are you trying to find that, that peace and that satisfaction that, that you long for? Is it in your own knowledge, in your own strength? Is it in your own flesh and in your own wisdom? How's that going? Because if you're feeling tired and worn down, you should understand very clearly why, shouldn't you? If you are weighed down with, with guilt and, and fear because you're just not certain about anything? If you have been left unsatisfied because, because everything in this life has been letting you down, including maybe even people in your life, who have you put your hope in and you're trying to find your trust and peace in? 
Well, then you're nothing like a bush in the wasteland, aren't you? Trying to find satisfaction, but it just can't be there. It is not going to be found in you or in the things of this world or anything that you do. You will be like a bush in the wasteland dwelling in the parched places of the desert, in a salt land where no one lives. To rely on ourselves, to try to find our happiness and our peace and our contentment and our satisfaction in our, our lives, or the people in our lives, the things we do, the things we strive for, the things we long for in this world, You're going to be left lacking, thirsty. Malnourished. And maybe you know what that feels like. Maybe that's the choice you've been making. Maybe that's why you're looking and searching, that there's got to be a better way. that I'm not finding it in, in the things of this life. I, I, I continue to be let down and hurt and unsatisfied. And, and that's why God says there is another way, dear Christian. There is another place to plant yourself. And it's by the stream. By that stream that can nourish and satisfy. And alone can give you what you need. The, the stream that, that takes all of those things away. All of the worry. All of the fear. All of the guilt. All of the lack of peace. All of that that we long for. That stream. Those waters. That we can plant ourselves by can meet every one of those needs and absolutely more. See, God can take care of all of those things. God can remove those things that you don't want, that fear and that worry and that anxiety. And he can replace it with true peace and true satisfaction and true joy and hope that actually lasts. Friends, you know what that stream is that, that God wants you to plant yourself by. You know what it is. It's right here. All throughout the Bible, it's, it's pictured as this stream, as this refreshment, as this water that satisfies, that gives us what our thirsty hearts long for that our quenched souls long for comes to give us exactly what we need. Because what you find here in this word of God, in this water of life, what you find here is, is not what you have to do to go out and, and be better and try harder to, to accomplish what you want to accomplish in your life. It's not here that you find that what you have to do to become more happy in this life. Or what you have to do to be more accomplished in this life. What you have to go and do in order to have more peace. What this word of God, this water of life, offers to you is what's already done so you can have those things. What's already done so you can know what peace really is, so that you can know what has been done, so that you can already right now feel satisfied and complete and filled up. Because what this Word of God reveals is not first how to live, but about the one who lived for you. This Word of God is the revelation of the one who was willing to come into this desert wasteland of a world 
and to take your place. To come and to live this law of God in your place. This one who was willing to come and, and to be parched for you. Who cried out from across, I am thirsty. Yes, he was physically, physically thirsty. Physically, he was longing for water, but, but on that cross, he was thirsting for the love of God. He was thirsting for his father to, to, to throw him just some crumbs of mercy, but his heavenly father couldn't. Because it was your sin and mine that he was wearing on that cross. He did that for you. So that you wouldn't know what it's like to be that parched. That you wouldn't have to know what it feels like to thirst for the love and the mercy of God, but that from that tree of the cross could flow in great abundance forgiveness for absolutely every sin. That from that tree of the cross could flow in great abundance peace. That already right now you are at peace with God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That from that tree of the cross could flow abundantly the promise of life. New life with God right now. A life that has purpose in this world. And it's to know that you are his. That you are loved. That your purpose is to know him and to make him known. From that tree of that cross which is stained with innocent blood, the abundance of hope comes. Hope that is not found in yourself or what you do, but what has been done for you, that you have waiting for you a home in heaven. Your friends, from that tree of the cross flows every blessing that you need or your heart could ever want or desire. Flows every blessing that you're quenched soul desires that alone can fill you up, that alone can bring you satisfaction, that alone can bring you true and lasting joy. Your friends, the choice is clear, isn't it? That's why we love the word of God. That's why we crave it. That's why this matters absolutely more than anything, because it's here that we find what our souls long for and desire. It's where they alone find their satisfaction. Planted by these waters. Listen again. We're like that tree as it sends its roots out by the stream. We don't have to fear the heat when it comes. Our leaves will always be green. There's no worries in a year of drought. It never fails to bear fruit. That's why we love this word of God. It alone can bring true satisfaction and peace and joy to our life. It's what we're all about here at Heritage Lutheran Church. The Word of God is at the center of everything we do and is the DNA of who we are. And that's what this three-week series is, is helping us, again, review, like we do every year. What are we all about here? What is our purpose? Not just as a church gathered together, but as individual Christians. It's the Word of God. It's the heart and core of everything we are and everything we do. It's where we find our peace and our joy and our satisfaction and our contentment. If you've got your service folder, turn to the front page. Right on the bottom, you see our logo. And maybe it's been a while since you've really looked at the logo. Maybe you've never really looked at it before. But that logo there is, is the heart of everything we're talking about here this morning. You see what you see there? Probably what first jumps out at you is what? The cross. The cross is at the center of everything that we do. The focus of our the abundance our peace and life and forgiveness and salvation. But you see what's below the cross? What 
is that? Looks like water, doesn't it? I hope it looks like water. <laughs> it's blue, it's kind of flowing, but, but it also is there to illustrate a book. <coughs> Which book? The only book. The Word of God. That water of life. And from that cross, what do you see coming off? Green leaves. Its leaves are always green. And at the center of everything we do is Jesus and his cross. Fed by the word of God, we are able to bear abundant fruit. The center of everything we do here is the word of God and what it reveals to us. Jesus Christ crucified and risen for us. DNA, who we are. A and that's why we come and gather here in this place. Why when we come together here in this place and, and, and we come here for worship, the focus is not on politics. It's not on social justice or social causes and how to make our world a better place to live. Where's the focus when you come here? It is the word of God. From invocation to blessing. From the liturgy to the lessons to the sermon to the songs to the hymns. All of it is focused on the word of God because it's at the core of everything that we do. That's why we offer so many Bible studies here. And why we are constantly encouraging every one of you to be involved in one of those. It's the heart of who we are. It is the source of our life and our peace and our joy and our satisfaction and our salvation. It's why you are encouraged to, to open up this book at home, to read it, to study it, to talk about it with your spouse, with your family, or just if you're on your own, to talk to God about it. This is the source of all of who we are and what we do. It's what drives our purpose and our mission. It is, it is our DNA. And we just, we have no excuses. We just don't. We have no excuses to be like that bush out the wasteland. Opportunities abound. Here at church and in your home. And your, your time is not an excuse either. Because you will make time for what's important to you. I, I, I'm sure that, that you don't skip meals for very long because you're just too busy to eat. You're going to at least grab something on the way, right? You're going to go through the drive through You're going to throw something in the microwave. You're going to eat because your body needs that. You're going to run down, and you're not going to be able to do all the things you've got to do that you think your time is better spent doing. How much more our souls, they need the word of God. Our souls need to be fed. They need to be nourished. They need this water of life. It's time to stop making excuses. It's time to focus on what's really, really important, isn't it? Choose to plant yourself where you know you're going to be nourished. Choose to make this much more important than it is right now in your life. God is laying that choice before you. Don't be like that bush in the wasteland. Be that tree planted by those streams of water. Its leaves are always green. Who never worries. Who never has, has to fear. But continually connected to that source of life and peace and strength, your Savior, Jesus. So plant yourself right here in these pews every single Sunday. Plant yourself in a chair in a Bible study. And say, I'm going to grow with my fellow Christians. And I'm going to encourage them in their faith as they encourage me in my faith. Plant yourself at your kitchen table or on your couch or wherever it is that you want to read your Bible. And spend time. Spend time by those life-giving waters. Plant yourself where you know you're going to find exactly what you need. What your faith desperately longs for. What your soul is thirsting for. The choice is clear, dear friends, because you know what you're going to find. Jesus. For you. Right now.
what you need for us. 